Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be. Uh, CC here, Chris, from New York, uh, Westchester County. Today is uh, September 26th, and I want to give you a little background real quick um, of the uh, of the flutter um, that, that I went through initially in the beginning uh, where I was trying to debunk this, you know, that's what we're trying to do, guys. We're trying to debunk this, but it turns out that everything is flat. We live on a flat plane and we're motionless, so uh, there's no question. There's, there's no reason to question it anymore. But th- let me just back back to what I was saying. Um, I uh, was fishing. I'm a freshwater fisherman. All right, I like to uh, I like to fish on uh, lakes, basically, the very large lakes, a couple hundred acres, some of them. Um, there's one in particular I'd like to go to. I, I think I think it might be seven, maybe eight miles long uh, from shoreline to shoreline, from tip to tip. Now, it's an unusually shaped lake. So if you don't know what you're looking for, you're not going to see it. While I was on that lake, I, I, I was familiar with the Earth's curvature uh, chart. Um, and... In fact, I would carry it with me just to answer my own questions of areas that I'm that I'm that I, I like to go to. Anyway, uh, so I look at the chart and I see that I should be seeing a 54 foot curvature. All right, from shoreline to shoreline. So I took the boat. I went all the way to the uh, other side of the uh, lake, and 54 feet is pretty big, guys. I mean, you know, that's going to cover most of these trees. Uh, and there's no way you should be able to see the, the shoreline. And then I was, but that's I wasn't I wasn't thinking about that. I wasn't on on that level yet, quite yet. I was trying to figure out how the hell this water could bend, you know. And if it was bending, how the shoreline, how it wasn't going over the shoreline, because that's what it would be doing. Water seeks its level. We all know that. It just didn't make any sense to me. You know, and then I was trying to look for a hump. You know, uh, there should be a hump. And then I was saying to myself, you know, maybe you really can't see it, you know, in, on, on water. You know, maybe maybe it needs to be frozen, you know, like a frozen lake. And then I was thinking about ice road truckers. You know, they're flying down this lake that goes on for miles, you know, and there's no hump, you know. I mean, there's nothing. They should be able to get into their trucks and fly down there and hop off something, you know, like a jump or something, but there's no hump. I I kept rattling it around back and forth saying, I just don't, there's just no bending of water. I mean, water can't bend and there's no way a lake could bend. And then I'm like, you know, maybe, maybe the curvature test doesn't work, you know, on lakes. Maybe they just don't curve because, you know, water seeks its level and it goes into a puddle. Um, And I was trying to bring the scale down a little bit and so I can understand it better but it doesn't make any sense because the entire at what I used to think was a planet has to bend and when it's at the equator it's got to bend even further because we see this perfect ball and I kept running it around in my head trying to debunk it and there's no way of debunking it first off you shouldn't even be able to see the trees because they're only about 20 or 40 feet high, there should be a 54 foot drop. So what the hell am I looking at the shoreline for with my binoculars? You've seen these tests, you know, and you've thought about it and you know, (laughs) you know that there is no curvature. You know that there is absolutely no curvature at all whatsoever and no movement at all whatsoever. It's obvious. All right, and that was one of the things. And that's not all of it. That was one of the things that, you know, I tried to debunk it, and I, I just couldn't. You know, there was just no way of debunking it. There, I, I shouldn't be seeing what I'm seeing, you know. Um, and especially during the wintertime, there should be a hump. Now, granted, the lake up in the Catskills is much, much smaller. I don't even think it's a mile. So and there should be a curvature, but it's too minuscule to even measure, you know, and, 
But with something that grand size, you know, that that's really what, I mean, it's true. Anyway, okay, so let me go back to what I was originally going to talk to you about. I figured I'd throw that in there, and so you think about it. Um, I want to talk about the North and South Pole, all right? I want to talk about how I believe that they're connected, because it's a nice ring that's around us. And if it is, then the North Pole and the South Pole shouldn't exist. It's just a ring around us, and we're in the middle of it. Now, people say this ring is 200 feet high. Probably is. I've seen pictures. I don't know if they're true or not. They say to get to the dome, if the dome ends there, which I don't know. This, you know, the, the, um, when you get up 200 feet and you get onto the shelf, the ice shelf, who knows how long it goes on for? Could go on 30 miles, could go on 40 miles. You know, could it go on 10 miles? Maybe it's only 10 miles. It's just you're going to have to walk it. Anyway, well, you don't have to walk it. Admiral Byrd didn't. I mean, they they flew they flew planes in there, and they say they were hitting something, and they had they did crash land some of those planes. So I don't know what to make of that. But um, if there is more land, then this dome has to continue on. It would be covering everything. You know, maybe there isn't more land. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you know, you go back and you look at these interviews with this guy who's a historian, as far as I'm concerned, with all of his uh, successful trips that he's taken. Um, and he's claiming more land and, and he's claiming more uh, resources, unbelievable resources that you couldn't imagine. You know, and if you think about it, it makes sense because the creator would want us to figure all of this out because it screams flat earth all around us. You know? We would have figured this out if it wasn't for the elite taking over and putting us into this slavery is basically what we're in if there is more land out there because we're in this, you know, ring uh, surrounded by ice walls that are 200 feet high and and possibly 50 miles or 75 miles to to walk to, to get to the outer limit. You know, if that's true, then... It's, it's a slavery system that we're in here. And, if, and it does make sense. But let me, let, me, let me get back to what I was saying over there with Admiral Byrd. You know, I mean, and the creator. The creator would have wanted us to go and investigate this. And we would have used all of our resources up to get there at the end. I mean, hell, we would have been crawling on our, our hands and knees begging for death. You know, getting to getting getting down there and, and, and going over a fifty mile walk and and out of resources, water, food. You know, and then all of a sudden we look up and we see paradise. It would make sense. It really would. Just the way I look at it. You know. Back to the sl- slavery system. If you look at what we're living in, it, it's 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 almost like we're treated like children. You know, it's the elite have have said, hey, okay, let's give them money. Some will become successful, you know, if they go through the correct indoctrination uh, period. Some will become richer than they could ever imagine. But I believe that's also done intentionally, too. You know, just because a social, someone comes up with a bright idea with a social networking and then all of a sudden takes off and, and he's the richest guy in the world doesn't mean he's smart. All right. I mean, this, this whole thing was allowed to happen. They needed companies to do this. They needed monsters to control. The elite allowed this to happen. It was a perfect opportunity. Internet was coming out, social network. You know, Amazon, another thing. You know, people don't want to go out shopping anymore because they get lazy. Perfect thing. It's like making a phone call. That's why QVC was so popular. People would just call up and order whatever the hell they want. Hell, you could get steak Omaha steaks at, 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 from QVC. Remember that? I don't even know if they're on anymore. But, I mean, all of these things were created for us. You know, the money, uh, the, the lives that we lead. You know, cars, we, they got to get back and forth with cars. The debt. You know, so every everything is, is, is like a child in this system that we're in. You know, we, we shouldn't be doing any of this. Because it's all bullshit. Everything that we're learning that, well, the indoctrinated people are learning are all bullshit. The history is wrong. The science is wrong. Professors are wrong. They're totally useless. You know, I, I mean, it, it's it, it's unbelievable. It really is. But that's the system that they've created. 
You know, what we got to do is we got to get through that, and we've got to organize together and come up with a, ma uh, a major plan. And that's what everybody needs to do. Because this isn't going to be around, you know. What generation is going to be the generation that's going to wake up and say, we've had enough? Is it going to be my generation? Is it going to be your generation? I don't know. I don't know. All right, I, uh... All right. All right, uh, I thank you for viewing. I thank you for, uh watching my videos, and I thank you for letting me be a part of your life.